Namaste and welcome once more to the introduction to basic spoken Sanskrit. Today is the fourth lecture on introduction of self and others. The method that I am going to use to present spoken Sanskrit has been evolved by Samskrita Bharati. It's a worldwide organization that has been developing this method of making Sanskrit easily learnable by the people and they conduct regular 10 days, 20 hours spoken Sanskrit uh, camps across various parts of the country and in different parts of the world. So, uh, as you go ahead and learn spoken Sanskrit, one of the important things that I will request you to do is to use a lot of body language because you see when you teach yourself a language using body movements then you allow a lot more neural connections to form with the acquisition of any new word. So I would highly recommend that as you're learning this language you use a lot of movements in order to depict the new words that you are learning. The objectives of this course are the of this particular session are the following. First we will learn how to introduce oneself and others. Then I will teach you some basic pronouns in the singular form. From there you will also learn some of the genders of different words in Sanskrit. And then I will just present to you the third person conjugation of the verb to be in the present tense and also try and highlight to you some unique features of Sanskrit which is related to this verb to be. Mama Nama Anuradha Mama Nama Anuradha Mama Nama Anuradha When you ask a man, the question will be Bhavataha Nama Kim Mama Nama Pijisakanti Palaha Uttama So the question is Bhavataha Nama Kim now, because of the certain macho nature of the word bhavataha, I normally recommend that you do it with the action bhavataha nama kim. Try that out. Bhavataha nama kim. Bhavataha nama kim. Mama nama pijisakanti palaha. Uttama. Alright. So now when you have a lady before you, you would say bhavataha. Bhavatyaha nama kim. Bhavatyaha nama kim. Bhavatyaha nama kim. Mama nama achitaha. Uttama. Bhavatyaha. You see, when we do this for a lady, I normally joke and say that whenever you see a lady pass by, you have a jaw drop. And then you have the breath that leaves you. So you have the bhavatyaha. Okay, so that makes it easy for you to remember the word. So, Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. I just revise that for you. Bhavataha Nama Kim. Mama Nama Pijisakanti Palaha. Uttama. Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. Mama Nama Achita. Uttama. When you are asking somebody the name is Bhavataha. Nama Kim and Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. Both the terms Bhavataha and Bhavatyaha refer to the U in the formal case and therefore there is a difference between the uh, masculine as well as the feminine. Now what I want you to do is I will give you certain names and you ask me the right question. So if I tell you Mama Nama Sita the question would be Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. Mama Nama Gita. Yeah, great. Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. Mama Nama Ramaha. Bhavataha Nama Kim. Mama Nama Girishaha. Bhavataha Nama Kim. Very nice. So, I'll show you the written form of what we have just done. We have Mama Nama to say that my name is. The question to a man is Bhavataha Nama Kim. To a lady is Bhavatyaha Nama Kim. And then when we have 
the informal way of asking the informal question is tava nama kim now the tava doesn't depend on the gender you can ask a man as well as a woman the same question tava nama kim and the answer is mama nama whatever it can be mama nama piyush kanti palaha or mama nama archita it would not change the next lesson is when you are introducing somebody introducing the third person so saha piyushaha saha piyushaha kaha piyushaha saha piyushaha now the word saha refers to he in the english language when i tell you he then it doesn't tell you about he that or he this in sanskrit the distance is coded into the word itself so when i say saha it means he who is far so saha piyushaha now when you have somebody who is near then it becomes eshaha eshaha prithvi eshaha prithvi kaha prithvi eshaha prithvi and when he's far it will be saha piyushaha kaha piyushaha saha piyushaha and eshaha prithvi eshaha prithvi Did you get that saha eshaha and the question is kaha who is kaha prithvi eshaha prithvi now when you have two ladies with you then you would say sa shrabani sa shrabani ka shrabani sa shrabani you remember when piyush was far we were saying saha piyushaha saha piyushaha now when it's a lady it becomes sa shrabani say that sa shrabani very good and as you say it i really recommend that you use your hand to point far away so that your body learns the distance that is embedded in the words and i have archita who is right next to me so i would say e sha archita e sha archita ka archita e sha archita once more e sha archita and far away sa shrabani sa sa shrabani ka shrabani sa shrabani ka archita e sha archita e sha archita so can we revise that for the feminine ones when she is far away it will be sa when she is near it is e sha and the question is ka so sa e sha ka i'll just draw your attention on a precision of pronunciation the sh that is there is the murdha sh which means that the tongue touches the roof of the palate so it's e sha you will hear the difference if one says e sha or if one says e sa and if one says e sha so i really recommend that you put in these precisions of pronunciation right from the moment go so let's say that again sa shabuni e sha archita and ka archita ka shabuni got that so in sanskrit we have three genders we have looked at the masculine and the feminine for far and near next we will look at the neuter gender so i have with me a fruit and if i keep the fruit far away it becomes tat imagine that it's far away and i say tat phalam tat phalam kim phalam tat phalam and if i have a flower which is just next to me i will say e tat pushpam e tat pushpam kim pushpam e 
tat pushpam so did you catch the different words when it is far it is tat when it is near it is a tat and the question is kim so i'd now like to show it to you on the screen on the board so we are looking at the third person pronoun for he she and it and when you're introducing another person for a person who's far masculine you would say saha when it's near it is he is a shaha and the question is kaha in the feminine case it is sa a sha ka and in the neuter we have tat a tat kim i hope you have got that i will do a certain exercise for you and uh, allow you to say saha or esha correctly so esha kaha esha kaha the answer is esha ravindranathah esha ravindranathah esha kaha esha ravindranathah saha saha kaha saha kaha saha swami vivekanandah saha swami vivekanandah kaha swami vivekanandah saha swami vivekanandah uttamam we we'll do this for the feminine meera bai ka meera bai ka meera bai e sha meera bai e sha meera bai durga durga ka durga sa durga ka durga sa durga very good next i will just talk to you a little bit about the objects and their genders because unlike in english language in the english language uh, the gender of the object depends on the object itself in sanskrit the gender of the word depends on the ending of the word for example we have the word for glass which is chasha kaha chasha kaha and the question is kaha chasha kaha and the answer is a shaha chasha kaha kaha chasha kaha a shaha chasha kaha so which gender was that you got it this was a masculine word similarly we have talaha meaning a lock talaha kaha talaha a shaha talaha chama saha kaha chama saha e shaha chama saha very good dhana syutaha syutaha is a bag and this is a money bag so dhana syutaha kaha dhana syutaha e shaha dhana syutaha very good we'll move on to some feminine words so listen to the ending of the words sthalika sthalika ka sthalika e sha sthalika e sha sthalika you guess the gender of the word it's a feminine word churika churika ka churika e sha churika very good mala mala ka mala e sha mala kunchika kunchika the key ka kunchika e sha kunchika now we have some other words that end with e 
which are also feminine. So, Duravani, very important gadget in today's world. Duravani, Ka Duravani, Esha Duravani, Duravani, it is a sound that comes from far. So, Duravani, Ka Duravani, Esha Duravani. Lekhani, Lekhani, Ka Lekhani, Esha Lekhani. Kupi, Kupi, a bottle, Ka Kupi, Esha Kupi. And finally the words with the neuter that we have looked at before but I will just do one or two in this context. Push. Pam, pushpam, kim, pushpam, e tat, pushpam, kim, pushpam, e tat, pushpam. So that is a hand and that is a fan. The word for fan is vyajanam and the word for hand is kara. So this becomes a Karavyajanam. Kim karavyajanam? E tat karavyajanam. Kim karavyajanam? E tat karavyajanam. Uttamam. So I hope you have understood how the gender of a word is determined based on the endings of the word. So you have to listen to the endings very, very carefully in Sanskrit and then determine the gender accordingly. So, we have next the verb to be in the third person present tense. So, the verb is asti and nasti. Chasha kaha asti. Chasha kaha asti. Jalam, water asti. Jalam nasti. Chasha kaha asti. Jalam nasti. Chayam asti. Chayam nasti. So the words are asti and nasti. So the word asti and then nasti is comprised of na plus asti and there is a phonetic combination that takes place and it becomes nasti. So let's do a few exercises here. So pipasa asti. Thirst. Pipasa asti. Jalam nasti. Jalam nasti. Pubhuksha. Hunger. Pubhuksha asti. Bhojanam nasti. Pubhuksha asti. Bhojanam nasti. Now there is a certain relationship between these sentences that can estab be established by the word kintu. So, in the next uh, sentence on the screen we see karyam work, karyam asti, kintu samayaha nasti, karyam asti, samayaha nasti, karyam asti, kintu samayaha nasti. The next one, mastakam asti, buddhihi so, it's up to each one to fill up, I guess, that one. <laughs> Fine. So, the next that we will look at is I am. I am in Sanskrit is aham. Aham anuradha. Aham mahila. So, aham. Aham is the I in Sanskrit. So, you say aham anuradha. Aham Mahila, Aham Bharatiya and when you want to formally ask a man who are you then the question would be Bhavan Kaha, Bhavan Kaha, Aham Piyushaha, Aham Purushaha, Aham Bharatiya. Uttamam. So he would also answer as Aham Bharatiya. Being a woman, I would say, Aham 
Bharatiya. So the adjectives uh, go according to the subject. Now, Bhavan kaha? Aham Prithvinataha. Aham Ayati Chatraha. Uttamam. So, Aham Anuradha. Bhavan kaha? Bhavan kaha? That's the question. And we listen to their answers. Aham Pijushaha. Okay. Aham Prithvinataha. Uttamam. Dhanyavada. And when you are now in front of two beautiful ladies, what would you say? Aham Anuradha Bhavati ka Bhavati ka Bhavati ka Aham Shavani Aham Mohila Aham Sangeeta Priya Uttamam I am asking Archita Bhavati ka Aham Archita Aham Bharatiya Aham Nritta Priya Very good. So, as you have noticed, when a man speaks, he says, Aham Bharati Yaha. And when a lady speaks, she says, Aham Bharati Ya. Sangeeta Priya. Sangeeta Priya. Nritya Priya. Nritya Priya. You have to make this distinction in the adjectives when you are talking about a man and when you are talking about a lady. So, I will just show this to you on the screen now so that you also get familiar with the written aspect of this language. So, here we have aham and then there is the verb asmi which is conjugated in the first person present tense. So, aham anuradha is actually sufficient but if you want to elaborate it and make the entire sentence it would be aham anuradha asmi which means I anuradha am. So, the asmi refers to I am. And now, as we see on the screen, we have Aham Mahila Asmi, Aham Bharatiya Asmi, Aham Sanskrita Priya Asmi. All this would be for a woman, of course. And then when a man is saying, he would say, if I ask the question first, it would be Bhavan Kaha. The answer would be Aham Purushaha, Aham Bharatiya, Aham Sanskrita Priya, Sangeeta Priya. And a lady would uh, the question to a lady would be Bhavati ka and she would answer Aham Chhatra, Aham Desha Bhakta and when we are talking in the informal context the question would be Twam Kaha and as we have seen when you are asking a man it would be Twam Kaha when you ask a lady it would be Twam Ka and the answers would vary accordingly the verb to be for the second person informal is asi. So, the whole question would be Twam kaha asi or Twam ka asi. And we have it there Twam kaha asi, Twam ka asi. The answer if it is a man would be Aham gaya kaha. If it is a lady, Aham gai ka. And the verb to be in the first person is optional. So, you could say aham gaya kaha or aham gaika asmi. Or you can also say aham samskrita jnaha or aham samskrita jnya, knower of Sanskrit. Another adjective aham shantaha or aham shanta. So, the yes or no in Sanskrit is am or na. So, if the question is Bhavan or Thwam Krida Priyaha Kim and if yes, he would say Aam Aham Krida Priyaha. If it is a lady, you would ask Bhavati or Thwam Shikshika Kim and the answer is Na Aham Na Shikshika or Aham Shikshika Nasmi. Now, I thought we could apply what we have just studied in the context of the Upanishads and we have these famous Mahavakyas, the great four sentences from the different Upanishads. The first one being Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahma plus Asmi becomes 
Aham Brahmasmi. This is from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad and it means I am Brahman. The philosophical purport of this is fantastic and it is something that you can spend a lifetime contemplating upon what it would mean. And then the next Mahavakya says, not just I am that, but you are also that. Tat, Thwam, Asi, that you are. Not just I am that Brahman consciousness, but you too are fundamentally that same Brahman consciousness. Tat, Thwam, Asi, coming from the Chandogya Upanishad. And the realization of that, Saha, Aham, Asmi, that I am. So hum asmi. So the saha aham combines together with the sandhi and becomes so hum asmi from the Ishopanishad. In this case, you would have often heard the very short mantra and a very powerful mantra, which is just so hum. It is a mantra that you can chant very often, and they say it is also re related to our breathing pattern. So we say hum sa so hum, hum sa so hum. It is a constant reminder through our breath that essentially we are nothing but the breath itself. And that breath, the quality of that breath is that of the infinite Brahman. So saying this, I would like to just share with you a beautiful quotation by Dr. Radha Krishnan. He says, Sanskrit has molded the minds of our people to an extent to which they themselves are not conscious. Sanskrit literature is national in one sense, but its purpose has been universal. That is why it commanded the attention of people who were not followers of a particular culture. So, Dhanyavadaha.